Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. And we are zooming in and focusing in on a great topic, I feel. And that is what I'm going to entitle The Blame Game with the Narcissist. The Blame Game with the Psychopath. The Blame Game with the difficult person, the blame game with the manipulator that has put me into the victim mentality, the depression, the feeling of angst, regret, and oftentimes more pronounced is fear, otherwise known as social anxiety, um, which then becomes and can evolve into PTSD, complex PTSD. It can affect the very epigenetics, the expression in your mind and what you do or don't do, the lethargy or the growth that you then manifest and create in your life. The blame game with the narcissist, the blame game with the abuser, the blame game with the manipulator, the one who did me wrong, did me dirty, cheated, lied, put me out to dry, left me abandoned, rejected, feeling unloved, and mostly in an angry or fearful state. So when we look at really our feelings, it's to understand that your feelings come from your subconscious mind, which is not in ready awareness. Your subconscious mind is thought to basically um, comprise about 98 to 90% of your functioning. It is thought that only about 1% to 2% is the percentage or amount of the brain that we use. So it's a very small percentage that really enters our conscious awareness and then creates our thoughts and furthermore our feelings. It kind of, it's the processing or filter, if you will, if you think of kind of your feelings as like the raw sewage or the raw ingredients or materials that are then filtered through the conscious mind, the prefrontal cortex, the more recently involved aspect of our brain, of our mind, where we're up here and not in the heart space. And this, the prefrontal cortex is where we make decisions, we make judgments, we have reasoning, and we are able to look at the future. Now the ingredients are the raw materials, the raw ingredients, which are coming from the subconscious. And if your feelings and therefore the thoughts that are filtering them are into the blaming of the narcissist, perhaps you're in a thought form that does not serve you. It is not in your best interest and it's creating and perpetuating fear, social anxiety, anger, feeling stuck, feeling blocked. Fear, otherwise known as false evidence appearing real, if you look at it for like an acronym, it is when the mind has a sort of ability to recreate itself again and again and again. It will keep and maintain patterns, especially if they are rewarded. Stimulus and response. This is a, a, a oftentimes studied uh dynamic in psychology, stimulus and response. Stimulus and response as well as reward. So it's very important to understand that if you are in a stuck or sort of, you know, just going around in circles, you're not moving anywhere, you're not going forward. In my viewpoint, you have to look at the reward, the reinforcement that's keeping this cycle in place. Oftentimes, that involves the blaming of the narcissist, the blaming of the psychopath, the blaming on the past, the projection of this blame onto future and not being able to navigate it and being the master of your emotions and therefore your physiology. It is stuck in the subconscious mind. This, what I call payback. In other words, there is something that you are getting out of this. You are getting rewarded from blaming the narcissist. They did this to me. They lied to me. They cheated on me. And now I'm miserable. 
This is perpetual. Of course, you have legitimate suffering, M. Scott Peck. This is very important to go through legitimate suffering. Legitimate though, we all experience pain. You drop something on your toe, ow, this hurts. To perpetuate suffering is to say, the world is so difficult, the world is against me, everything is a mess, this is a chaos, the government this, the da 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 workforce this, you know, it's all the blame game. It's assigning external control, an external locus of control to how you feel. Well, I guess the news flash, the, the news, <laughs> the breaking news for you today is that you are within your body. You own your 10 fingers, your 10 toes, your two eyes, your lungs. I mean, these are part of you. These are your cells, the trillions and trillions of cells, including your mind itself, including your experience itself, including your direction itself. You are the owner. You are the capitan. You are the pilot. You know, you must put on the captain's hat and drive the plane. You know, you know, one thing when you talk about navigating your feelings, it's to, if you blame, you know, a past event, a past, a past individual, a past series of individuals, it's to understand the connection, the cause that creates the effect of your feelings, but furthermore, to release yourself and liberate yourself and to have an energetic shift, you need to stop the blame game and making them responsible and perpetuating the suffering. In other words, yes, this hurt. Yes, this was wrong. That was not the right thing. You know, it's okay to have legitimate suffering, but to prolong it, in other words, to perpetuate it, once again, you dropped a you know, 50 pound book on your toe, ow, that hurt. You move it off of your toe. Maybe you shake out your foot. You go, whoa, toes, can you still move? Okay, good, I did not break anything. Let's put that book elsewhere so I don't keep tripping over it. I'm not gonna continue to stub my toe. If you stub your toe at the beach or the cement, to blame the world at large, a series of people, you know, why didn't they pick this up? You're externalizing your power. You are disempowering yourself. Part of this mechanism, the stimulus response, is, is we're getting back to the dynamic that we understand and study in psychology, is to look at the stimulus and the response and then the reward. So the reward meanings, what are you getting out of it? What, you know, what is your reward? In other words, what are you getting out of this? What are you, is it a feeling? Is it an anger? Is it? A scowled face, is it pointing the finger like this? You know, this person, this person. Well, there's an old saying, and I'm not sure how old, but if you point the finger at someone else, you've got four pointing back at you. In other words, if you are blaming this person, you know, and saying it's their fault, and you're externalizing the locus of control, and the power of you is always outside of you, that's what you call an external locus of control, you're, you're, t you're not taking responsibility for yourself in your feelings in the present moment. You're basically saying they're responsible. They're responsible for me. I am essentially then dependent on this person for how I feel. That is a trauma bond. That is perpetuating suffering. It's to say the book dropped and I'm going to say the world is a problem. This is a problem. You're perpetuating suffering. So it's important to understand also the terms of pain and suffering. To drag on is to increase and perpetuate, meaning to continue or reward suffering in your life. And then people then become used to this like a bad habit. A habit can change, for example, smoking, swearing, oversleeping, being late, being unemployed, being angry, not eating well, um, not thinking well, not taking care of yourself. These can all be looked at in, in terms of a bad habit. You're swearing, you're anger, you're not disciplined. Um, you're putting the blame game, you know, saying it's everybody else's fault, you know, woe is me. Yes, you do have legitimate suffering. This 
could have been extremely wrong. This is not right. What happened to you was not fair. That can be an understood and basically, you know, a, a truth that you comprehend and that you, you know, analyze and look at and then furthermore accept. This happened. You you own it. In other words, you take ownership of your feelings. There's an internal locus of control that is essential for healing. And when you stop the blame game um, and constantly point at others as responsible, you know, you need to look at what is the reward? Am I getting angry? Am I getting juiced up? Is this giving me vengeance? Am I constantly using them to juxtaposition my feelings? My position, my feelings are always juxtapositioned off them. You know, you need to take your eyes and hands off of this individual as well as your feelings and pull them back to yourself. Pull back. Ease, stop the roll. Put the brakes on it. Stop. Don't enter into the boxing ring. Don't enter into their lane. Don't enter into their energetic etheric field. Give that back to them. They have the right to do whatever they're going to do, make their decisions, make their choices, determine how they treat people. Only you can control yourself and then how you handle it. So if this person is no good, not fair, they perpetuate, they try to push your buttons intentionally, deliberately set you off, then this person is not a good stimulus for you. This is not give this is giving you no reward. In fact, this is costing you emotionally. You are paying the price with your suffering for their sins. In other words, they're going to keep on keeping on. You must change. You must pull back, pull away, look away, take your hands off, take your heart off and look at things from your own standpoint and your own personal power. You have the power over this. It is very important to understand though the mechanism, the stimulus, response, and reward. In other words, what is the payback you are getting? Are you holding them responsible? Are they holding you accountable? Are you trying to get moral justification? Are you trying to uh, sort of wage, you know, this battle you know, with them when actually the true battle is within yourself. It's, you know, stop battling them and then look at the responsibility and the locus of control within yourself. Happiness is an inside job. Blaming somebody is also an inside job. You, it is like a bad habit. It is like smoking, cussing, being chronically late, chronically unhappy. These are the effects of a bad habit, oftentimes a, a, a bad habit of thought. Thoughts repeat themselves again and again and again until you change them. You know, we th it is thought um, um, that we think between like 90 and 95,000 thoughts per day. If you look at, um, you know, the studies of epigenetics, and, um, you know, breaking the habit of bring, being yourself a wonderful book that talks about, um, you know, the perpetual nature of your thoughts that they, you know, until you intervene and have intervention, you know, only, you know, five, five, uh, only like 1% of those, you know, is our new thoughts. So your mind will perpetuate and create a pattern. So it's like a bad habit, just like never, you know, eating right. Um, you're not going to the gym. You're getting in a funk. Maybe you need to have legitimate suffering. M. Scott Peck, you need to go through this stage. But to prolong the suffering, you have to ask yourself, to what degree am I prolonging the suffering? Can I, you know, put a stop? Can I say, okay, enough is enough. 40 years of blaming is enough. 30 years of blaming, I think, is enough. 20 years of giving my power away to others is enough. Okay, I think that will satisfy the quota for what we need to do and pull back the responsibility for your feelings within yourself where they belong. So it's thought that in 
And and by the way, the author is Dr. Joe Dispenza, who has written that book. He's got a lot of wonderful, uh, he's got a TED Talk that I would recommend, Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, his material is kind of heavy reading, breaking the habit of being yourself, um, wonderful studies. He talks about, you know, spontaneous healing and some other things. He's met and studied, you know, the um, some wonderful people, some true miracles of science and wellness and healing. So really remarkable story. Um, if you want to check him out, I would highly recommend it. Um, um, however, okay, so uh, getting back to a habit. So it is it is stated and well known that it is it requires 30 days of consistent and re repetition to create a new habit or break an old one. So in other words, the first 30 days are going to be the toughest. This is usually where people quit. They say, I'm not strong enough. I can't handle the cravings. You know, like if you've been um, an, an addict or an alcoholic, um, you know, you need to stop the behavior that is causing this distress, this disease, this complete chaos in your life. You are not having a good response, a stimulus response and reward. It ain't working. It ain't good. The stimulus alcohol, the response, al you know, alcoholism that you have is not a good partnership. It is not a good stimulus for you to encourage or have in your life. You have to come to that awareness. You have to have that aha moment. You have to go, this person, this substance, this stuff ain't good for what's going on in here. This response. If you're highly reactive, the stimulus, the cause is creating a bad response, a negative response, an allergic reaction. Um, and so you need to kind of, you know, reframe things, which means in, in psychology, which means looking at things differently, being able to rephrase so that you can comprehend. And another psychological term is called assimilate, meaning you're able to comprehend and put it into your repertoire. So you apply the knowledge. The key is the application. We are all about results here on the Peace and Harmony channel. Results, results, results. It's time to get it. We have a lot of viewers who have been dealing with this for years, decades, lifetime, lifetimes, etc. So, and not, you know, enough is enough. You know, it's time. The time is right now. So, looking at, you know, a new a new habit, it takes 30 days of repetition, going to the gym. Maybe you're going to go every day for 30 days. You'll find that then you're able to change your behavior, behavior modification, change your emotions, emotion rehabilitation, emotion um, modification, feeling modification, thought form modifications. I am. It's time to enjoy. So getting back to our reframing example, meaning looking at things in a new light to see how it applies to yourself and the blame game. So if going back to the gym, so maybe a lot of people have all felt this. If you have not, maybe you have to equate this with eating poorly or maybe you've smoked it, it's been smoking or you've had a drug addiction, drugging, alcoholism, alcohol addiction. So the first 30 days are the most difficult. But if you can get that first 30 days, you're giving your physiology the opportunity to create a new habit. So if you go to the gym every day for 30 days, you'll find that you're picking up a new habit. You are rewiring and refiring the neurons that wire and fire in your brain. And neurons that wire and fire together will stay together. So in other words, neurons that wire together fire together and, and meaning that this sets up like a groove or a pattern within you. You know, you say like, I have to change my attitude. That might be like a common phrase. You know, I have to get, you know, a, a, you know, a emotional makeover. I have to get an attitude makeover. That's usually when you're at the aha moment and you go, you know what? I'm kind of the one who's unhappy here. Everybody else, they can skip to the loo, you know, but what about 
right here, most important is your internal locus of control, your empowerment. It's time to take your power back and take responsibility. Getting back to our gym example, if you were to go there for 30 days in a row, you'd find it much easier to go the 31st and the 32nd. There's also a saying, motion is lotion. So a lot of people who work out or who have been out of the gym for a while who go back and it's very painful. It really hurts. It's hard to get motivated. It's hard to get on that treadmill, especially for the first <clears throat> five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. <clears throat> but oftentimes when people hit 20 minutes, they go through a, a breakthrough. And it's really getting to that emotionally with the blame game as well when you stop that bad habit. Stop blaming them for 30 days and see if you can then get through that big breakthrough where you then begin to feel better and have that knowingness and that confidence. Hey, really, it does, does all start with me. This is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please 